Apple recently dropped something huge for devs, and we are talking about programmatic access to the same foundation models powering Apple intelligence. The writing tools, image generation, and smart replies you see in iOS 18. And here's the kicker it all runs on device with no API keys, no usage limits, and no sending user data anywhere. Hey devs, welcome back. This is SwiftPal, and today we are covering Apple's massive ML framework updates for 2025. We'll look into the new foundation models framework that gives you direct access to on device language models, explore the programmatic image playground controls, check out the smart reply API that actually understands context, and see how vision and speech frameworks got major upgrades that solve real dev problems. Let's jump right in because there's a lot to cover, and honestly, some of this stuff is going to change how we think about building intelligent apps. So, let's talk about what changed. ML has been baked into iOS forever. Face ID, handwriting recognition on iPad, noise cancellation in FaceTime. But what's different now is that Apple intelligence brought those big foundation models directly to the platform. If you are using standard UI text view components in your apps, you probably already support some Apple intelligence features without doing anything. Genmoji works automatically in system text controls. Writing tools just works with standard views. The integration is almost annoyingly simple, either use standard views or add just a few lines of code to custom ones. But here's where it gets interesting and this is why we are here today. What if you don't want the default UI? What if you need more control over how these AI features work in your app? That's where the new programmatic APIs come in. And honestly, this is where things get exciting for developers who want to build something unique. Now let's dive into the foundation model framework because this solves one of the biggest problems developer face with AI integration. So here's the thing that really caught my attention about Apple's new foundation models framework. If you have ever tried working with local language models before, you know the pain. You download some model, your laptop sounds like it's about to take off and half the time you get responses that are well, let's just say they are creative interpretations of what you actually asked for. But Apple just changed the game completely. The framework gives you direct access to the same language models that power Apple intelligence and they are running efficiently on device. No network calls, no API cost and most importantly, no sending user data anywhere. Now the real magic here is something called guided generation. Instead of getting back a raw string that you have to pass and hope it's in the format you expected, you can define Swift data structures and the model will return properly typed objects. Let me show you exactly how this works with a practical example and then we'll explore how Image Playground gives you similar control over visual content. This is already pretty cool. We are telling the model I want a numeric answer and it gives us exactly that. No string passing, no hoping the response is in the right format. But here's where it gets really interesting. You can create your own custom data structures and have the model populate them directly. So what's happening here? The generable macro tells the framework that this struct can be generated by the language model. The guide macro gives you fine grained control over individual properties. This is huge for building reliable apps. You are not getting back unpredictable text that might or might not contain what you need. You are getting properly typed Swift objects with guaranteed constraints. The practical applications here are honestly pretty exciting. Think about content management systems that can generate structured data, educational apps that create quizzes and explanations, or business apps that can process and categorize unstructured input data. But structured text is just the beginning. Apple also gave us programmatic control over image generation, and the possibilities for dynamic visual content are massive. Moving on to visual content generation, Apple got this image generation capability built into the system now, and up until recently, if you wanted to use it in your app, you were pretty much stuck with whatever UI Apple provided, which is fine for basic use cases, but as developers, we like having options. iOS 18.4 introduced something called the Image Creator class, and this changes the game quite a bit. The Image Playground framework gives you Swift UI extensions to bring up the standard image generation interface, which is probably what most apps will end up using. But if you want to go beyond that default experience or need more control, over how image generation works in your app, now you have got programmatic access. I'm thinking about so many possibilities here. Custom image generation workflows for social apps, 
dynamic visual content that adapts to what users are doing, educational apps that create illustrations based on the content they are teaching. Actually, that educational angle is really interesting. Imagine a language learning app that generates custom images to help explain vocabulary, or a storytelling app that creates visual based on the narrative choices users make. The thing is, we are still figuring out the practical scope of what this image generation can actually handle. But having programmatic control means developers can experiment and discover what works for their specific use cases, which opens up some genuinely interesting possibilities for apps that need dynamic visual content. Now, while image generation is exciting, smart reply might be even more practical for most developers. This update addresses a real pain point in messaging apps. Moving on to smart reply, which showed up in iOS 18.4. This is one of those features that sounds simple but is actually pretty sophisticated under the hood. Instead of those generic thanks and sounds good suggestions we have all seen, Smart Reply actually understands conversation context and generates relevant responses. The thing that makes Smart Reply different is that it's not just looking at the last message and spitting out random responses, it's analyzing the entire conversation flow, understanding what's being discussed, and generating replies that actually make sense in the context. For business applications, this could be huge. Customer service apps where agents are handling multiple conversations simultaneously, team collaboration tools where quick contextual responses speed up communication, community platforms where helpful reply suggestions improve discussion quality. The thing that caught my attention is that this runs entirely on device. So you are not sending conversation data to some external service to get suggestions back. Everything stays local, which is pretty important for sensitive business communications or personal messages. But Smart Reply is just one piece of the puzzle. The vision framework updates are equally impressive, especially for developers working with document processing and camera based apps. So, Vision got some updates this year, and while framework updates can sometimes feel like just incremental improvements, these ones are actually pretty useful. Two things caught my attention document recognition and lens much detection. Yes, I know that second one sounds oddly specific, but hear me out, document recognition is the more obvious win here. Instead of vision just reading individual lines of text and leaving you to figure out how they relate to each other, it now understands document structure. We are talking about invoices, forms, report stuff, where the spatial relationship between text elements actually matters. So instead of giving back a bunch of disconnected text strings, Vision can now group related content together and give you a sense of document's logical organization, which is honestly huge for any app that needs to process business documents or forms. Now, lens much detection sounds weirdly nice until you think about it for two seconds. For camera apps, this is actually brilliant. You can detect when the lens is dirty and either suggest cleaning or adjust processing to compensate. For AR experiences where camera quality matters, this could be the difference between a smooth experience and users wondering why everything looks blurry. I mean, how many times have you tried to take a photo or use an AR app and everything looked off, only to realize later there was a fingerprint on your camera lens? Now, apps can actually detect and handle that situation proactively. The speech framework also got a major upgrade that productivity app developers have been waiting for. Let's look at how speech analyzer solves the long form audio problem. All right, so here's something that's been bugging me for a while. SF speech recognizer, you know, the old speech to text API was fine for short stuff like dictating messages or voice commands, but try to use it for longer content and it gets cranky. iOS 26 is introducing something called the speech analyzer API. And from what Apple saying, it's built specifically for long form audio processing which is honestly about time. The old system would kind of give up on longer recordings or the accuracy would drop off a cliff after a few minutes. Not great if you're trying to build something like a meeting transcription app or lecture recording tool. Speech analyzer apparently handles sustained audio much better. We are talking about the kind of scenarios where people are speaking for extended periods, meetings, interviews, educational content, that sort of thing. And it's designed to work well with distant audio sources too which anyone who's tried to transcribe a conference room meeting will appreciate. The performance improvements seem real. Apple specifically mentioned better accuracy for long form content, which suggests they have rethought how the underlying speech recognition model works for these use cases. 
I'm thinking this could be pretty significant for productivity apps. Imagine being able to reliably transcribe entire meetings or lectures with good accuracy. All happening on device, no need to send audio to some cloud service, no concerns about sensitive business conversations leaving the device. Now that we have covered all the individual frameworks, let's step back and see how Apple designed them to work together as a complete ecosystem. Here's what I find interesting about all this stuff. Apple isn't just throwing individual APIs at us and hoping something sticks. There's actually a coherent story about how all these pieces fit together. You have got your specialized domain frameworks, vision for image stuff, natural language for text analysis, translation for multi-language support, sound analysis for audio classification, and now the updated speech framework. Each one focuses on specific tasks with models that are optimized for those particular use cases. Then there's the custom model deployment side, Core ML for bringing your own models to the device, Core ML tools for optimization and conversion. And if you need something more specialized, there are alternative frameworks like MPS Graph, Metal, and BNNS Graph for specific performance requirements. And now we have got the foundation models layer that seems to tie a lot of this together with more general purpose language model capabilities. The thing is, each framework tackles specific domains with highly optimized task specific models, but they all work together as part of this broader on device intelligence approach. So you can use vision to understand images, natural language to process text, and foundation models to tie it all together with reasoning and structured output. It's not just about having more APIs, it's about having a complete toolkit for building apps that can understand and process different types of content locally on the device. This brings us to the bigger question, what does the shift to on-device AI actually mean for your apps and your users? So here's my take on what's actually happening here. While everyone else is racing to build cloud-based AI services with monthly subscription fees and data privacy concerns, Apple's going in the opposite direction. They are betting big on local on-device intelligence and honestly, I think they might be onto something. For us as developers, this approach has some real advantages. Privacy by design, user data never leaves the device, no network dependency, your AI features work offline, zero usage cost, these APIs don't charge per request, consistent performance not dependent on server load or internet speed, and no API key management, one less thing to worry about in production. The trade-off, you are working with Apple's ecosystem and their model capabilities, you can't just swap in the latest GPT model or fine-tune everything exactly how you want. But here's the thing, for most consumer app use cases, Apple's on-device models are probably more than sufficient and the user experience benefits of local processing are pretty compelling. I'm curious about how this plays out long term. Are we heading toward a world where the best AI experiences are actually the ones that don't require internet connections? These updates represent a significant shift in how we can integrate AI into our apps. And I think we are just scratching the surface of what's possible. If you want to master Apple's ML frameworks and build intelligent apps that respect user privacy while delivering powerful features, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm starting a complete series diving deep into each of these frameworks with hands-on tutorials, practical implementation guides, and real-world use cases. We'll cover everything from foundation model structure generation to advanced vision processing from smart reply integration to long-form speech analysis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.